My name is Matthew. I've been exploring the potential of haunted phenomena in relation to tragic history for 12 years now. I can tell you the story you're about to hear is true, at least as true as a ghost story can ever be. As earnest as one's endeavors into the unknown are, there's never proof. Paranormal evidence is typically theories and unusual recordings strung together by a subjective narrative. So I'm not here to claim anything beyond a weird experience that's true by my perception. I can't explain it myself. It all began on May 27th, 2017, while getting the opportunity to visit a historical site that has ghost lore associated with it, the Big Tunnel in Tunnelton, Indiana. There, I caught some EVPs, electronic voice phenomena, which is basically an, an unaccounted for voice in a voice recording that asked for help to get out of the tunnel and that their name was Henry Dixon. I had no knowledge at that point of the fact that in 1908, a 27 year old night watchman named Henry Dixon was found murdered there. My dad, Danny, you say hi to him? I had no way of anticipating the strange messages I would receive over the next three years that will forever deepen my curiosity about the unknown. ITC, or Instrumental Transcommunication, experiments involve the technique of using various devices to establish communication with entities. I typically utilize ghost box radios for this which rapidly scan frequencies in hopes of getting relevant and conversational communication. While conducting further ITC sessions shortly after my visit to the big tunnel, using several different devices in multiple locations, I started to get the name Henry Dixon, the name of the location, the big tunnel, and then messages of increasing disappointment of my ignoring, not helping, or trying to provide assistance to Henry. Who are you? <laughs> Henry Dixon? <laughs> Can I have a name, please? <laughs> My skeptical believer ass started to pay attention. I couldn't reconcile if Henry was truly with me as an attachment or if he could somehow know when I was available for communication. Why me? And is any of this even possible? So many unanswered questions. For the past year, I've been diligent in trying to listen for clues and messages from Henry as to how I might help, which leads us to this video. Finally, on August 16th, 2020, I feel I had a breakthrough. Please note, most responses are heard upon review and not in real time. Changes in the video's filter visually mark the replies that were the most significant. Those various audio responses have been enhanced, repeated, and sometimes slowed down. As always, we do not offer this video as irrefutable evidence of the paranormal, nor do we claim our annotations are 100% conclusive. All we're asking is that you please approach the data presented here with a curious mind, and that you wear damn headphones. While editing my video, The Bones of Secret Societies, 
which is about my acquiring an actual human skeleton from an abandoned building once used by the fraternal order Knights of Pythias. I took a break and turned on an ITC device called a Frank's Box number 181. Before too long, my old friend Henry Dixon made himself known. Can you say hello? Turn this up a little bit. Can you prove you exist? Can you say I exist? Technician? Can you say I exist? Can you say hello? Henry Dixon? Can you say hello? Can I help you, Henry? How can I help you, Henry? What can I do for you? Are you here with me, or are you still in the big tunnel? Are you with me, or are you in the big tunnel? Can you see me right now? If so, what color is my shirt? Pretty sure you just said yellow. For the record, Henry, do you feel stuck? If, if I remember right, you saved a woman, and the men who attacked her later came back and murdered you. You know, you were a hero saving her. Well, Henry, I hope you left me a message that uh, will allow me to figure out how to help you. Any final words? Can you say goodbye? Goodbye, Henry. Thanks for coming through.
that was unexpected. So much of what comes through these devices is not heard in real time, but later during audio review. When I finally had the opportunity to review that session and heard, put me with her, it hit me like a hammer. I interpreted this as Henry possibly feeling separated from his wife. So many questions. Where was his wife? If he can always be with me or come to me where I am, why can't he go put himself with her? After doing some research, I found that Mary Collier Dixon was interred at the Proctor Cemetery, which is the graveyard at the Dixon Chapel. That's right, the Dixon Chapel where I'm pretty certain 99% of Henry's family is buried, along with Henry himself. I decided I needed to go visit. I needed to know if I'd give Henry what he'd been trying to get me to hear these past few years. So on September 12th, 2020, I made the trek to rural Fort Rittner, Indiana to see if I could help deliver peace to the ghost of Henry Dixon. Upon entering the cemetery, there was a distinct older section where I assumed Henry's grave would be. I was instinctively drawn straight to Henry Dixon's marker which was improbable. I somehow just knew where I was going amongst the countless Dixons buried there. I also experienced a strong sense of grief and a tingling sensation shooting through my body the closer I got to his grave. So undeniable, unforgettable, and unprovable, but a very true personal experience. Another side note that I found to be an amazing synchronicity was there on Henry's grave marker was etched the symbol for the Knights of Pythias. I conducted an EVP session there and broke out my reverse speech Steve's box to see if Henry would come through once again, and perhaps for the last time. Just hope by me coming here today that I've brought you some sort of resolution so you can find some sort of peace. Is me coming here today? Did I did I bring you here? Um, did I help you in any way? Henry, are you here with me now? Henry, are you here with me now? All right, Henry. Let's turn this, let's turn this thing on. Yes. Is there anybody here with me? Henry, are you here? Are you here? Henry, are you here? Is this what you wanted from me, Henry? Henry, did I return you to your wife? 
Henry, do you have any messages for me? Yeah, I brought, I brought you here. Is this what you wanted for me? Yes, Matthew. Are you glad to be on the big panel? Henry, is your time with me now done that I've been here? Henry, is this what you wanted? Did you want me to bring you here? Henry, where did I meet you at? Where did we meet? Tunnelton? We're at in Tunnelton. Tunnelton. A big tunnel. Any final message for me, Henry? Anything else I need to know, Henry? Henry, can you say goodbye? Anybody else have a message for me? Goodbye, Henry. Henry, I hope this is what you needed for me. I hope you uh, were able to get closer to your family and loved ones. And if uh, this wasn't your message, I assume I'll hear from you again. I'll probably never know if I really helped Henry Dixon. I'll probably never know if anything really transpired here besides archiving some odd audio. I suppose if I never hear from Henry Dixon again, I can accept that as some sort of validation. So, if the ghost of Henry is real, was his spirit ever even in the Proctor graveyard but was drawn back to the scene of his murder? Or did he never leave the big tunnel in the first place? Maybe Henry behaved somewhat like an infamous spectral hitchhiker that haunts roadsides, getting in vehicles, asking for rides home, but he's eternally stuck in a pattern of trying to be put with her, returned to his wife. Or maybe he found peace, and I really assisted him in reuniting his family. There were several voices that came through. I may have been introduced to the entire Dixon clan. I just really don't know. Ultimately, I'm grateful for Henry. Whether his spirit was real or just the product of the paranormal trickster that seems to orchestrate so many of our perceptions because it pushed me to dig deep within myself and grapple with existential concepts that should be at the heart of all of our explorations. Who knows? Being open about that may lead to potentially helping someone else out, whether you can see him or not.